My name is Josh Reynolds, and we're going to be discussing whether or not military service is detrimental to education. Um, we, our side right here, Allison and Erica, we're going to be um, pro, I believe. We're, we're going to be defending that uh, uh, military service is harmful for students. And then our panel over here, Mr. Ricky over here, Gabby and Sean, they're going to be arguing against us and saying that it's good for students to be in the military. <coughs> so, without further ado, I'll go for I'll go first. Um, so I'm going to be focusing on something very simple. It doesn't take too much too much intellectual talk here to understand that that disabilities, illnesses, and disorders are a very real thing when you are in service. Um, it's a very popular, uh, very popular topic in Korea, you know, military and education. Is it necessary for someone to go to school for two years in order to receive a degree from university? Um, this is a big deal because military <coughs> service is a chapter of these men's lives that they, aren't, they don't choose it, it's chosen for them. And whether they have a good experience or a bad experience is something that is written already out for them. You will enlist. If you are trying to receive a degree, you must be in the military for two years. Um, this is difficult because being in, this, in the service, you can, you can get a physical or mental disability that will affect how you learn and it will limit your capabilities as students. Um, a common disorder among soldiers, I, I think everybody is familiar with, with PTSD, uh, post-traumatic -tra stress disorder, uh, this affects somebody living their lives, not necessarily being a student. So if you get this disorder, you're struggling <coughs> to do daily activities, let alone get an A in, in uh, communication class or public speaking or anything of that, uh, that nature. Um, so in conclusion, men who are enlist, who enlist our folks are, are faced with a potential life-threatening situation. Um, they don't choose this. It's chosen for them. Uh, so I don't believe that this is a well-thought-out process. For someone to receive a degree in Korea, I don't think it takes one person to, to go into military service for two years, dedicate their lives in order to receive a degree. I think that that is detrimental and very harmful for a student to receive a degree is to be in uh, the military. So. military it's two years of your life while you're young and you're still developing you can't make plans for the long term when you have two years you just have to spend somewhere else um, you um, while you're away you lose your networking opportunities some seniors you might meet when you're a freshman are long gone by the time you get back you lose your friends when you come back there's no one you know and there's the all too common story of guys who enter the military with a girlfriend will come back without one. Um, <laughs> and you're now two years older and um, when you come back to school you've forgotten what you've learned so long ago. Um, you have to relearn everything. It's almost a waste of money to have spent those two years in school to have to relearn everything. Um, plus it might um, being in the military might change what you want to do. Maybe majoring in dance doesn't seem so important anymore once you've been on the front line face-to-face uh, -face with North Koreans with guns. Um, uh, you might, um, you've been separated from friends that you've made while in the military. Um, and you might have difficulty readjusting. For some people, who uh, live in Gangnam all their lives, pampered by mommy and daddy, going to boot camp is a real shock. <laughs> and now they have to come back and um, <laughs> learn how to make kimchi again. So, <laughs> um, so it's a real adjustment issue for a lot of kids. Um, yeah. Because of education being delayed, it takes longer to join the workforce. Uh, for example, I have a couple of friends that have these connections outside of school, and the only way that they 
during their university experience. And the only way that they could go ahead and talk to these people is during their college experience, of course. So they need to go ahead and have meetings with them, go out for coffee with them. And if, for example, if it's a male, they have to take two years out of their college experience to join the military. And um, they miss these opportunities. So there could, during this time, while they're in the military, they could have been these job opportunities. <coughs> but because of these uh, forced military, it takes longer for them to join the workforce. And, Karis, you're distracting me. <laughs> okay, so once again, they are, um, they, have to, they have to go to the military for two years before they're granted the university diploma. And speaking of, of the consequences that the military brings, while yes, they, it, many could agree that it does bring discipline to oneself, but according to our culture and society professor, he says that the experience that they gain in the military is no help for them at all for the future. For example, if in the military there were, I don't know, a nuclear physicist or something, that experience that they learn does not help them at all. So why is this important? Because this forced military service only hinders their college education and also their future. So looking at the magnitude of this, their first, um, going back to the first point, not only do they have to deal with emotional problems, but they also have to deal with the consequences that the military brings to them, which is often missed opportunities, PTSD, and unfortunately, their girlfriends breaking up with them because of this. Thank you. Okay. Good job, guys. It was all right. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd first like to open up with fact that like most students out of high school they got they're nervous they're going to college it's a new world and everything uh, but this forced military like like she said got no students that um, are pampered all their lives everything but what in boot camp it, it, it enables stability it brings motivation confidence to be in this new world like they're they were pampered all their lives and now they're actually getting more in depth with how to live, how to survive in every situation. Dedication and punctuality, they show up on time, they're on point. Everything is designated to a schedule and they know what they have to do after this boot camp situation because that's what they learn. It is military. Like, I mean, most of the CEOs in the US were Marine Corps vets. That's, that's one situation. Out here, most of them, um, most, like, Korea has one of the highest graduations um, from universities, so that has a huge, that has a huge mark on the military, too, because most, most of them are males, too, and most males have, to, well, all males have to go to the military, but the situation with, um, it gives them balance and lets them function with their education and daily lives. <coughs> Good morning, class. Um, I, I, I interviewed a Korean on this issue, and she said, we have not finished the war, so girl is so weak, so men go to, go to the military and protect the country. Now, okay, she said girl is so weak. Um, <laughs> it doesn't, your opinion doesn't matter here, but I, I care about it. Um, but she thinks it's, ne it's necessary for men to go to war during their uh, college experience because honestly, their their first year in co in college is n is nothing. They only drink. Those who were here last se last semester, all all we saw was freshmen going to the hospital because of alcohol po po poisoning. So forgetting what they learned. They didn't learn much. <laughs> <laughs> they learned how to control their alcohol. Maybe. Uh, and, and if they don't go, it's... Uh, you're consider, considered not to be as patriotic. So in the future, when you want to get a job, it's just like, oh, have you gone to the military? No. Oh, okay. Denied, rejected. Who has gone to the mil Who has gone to the military and shown their support for their country? Thank you. 
As a kid, it was my duty to wash dishes after dinner. I also had to wait until I was 21 to buy alcohol. It's not fair sometimes, but there's rules in place for a reason, and at the end of the day, they usually make us a better person in the end. Um, my point is that, you know, you do things that you don't necessarily want to, but you have to. The uh, military is mandatory in the career for men, unless you have a mental disability or, you know, they, fight, they accommodate you accordingly. Uh, the military has a very positive effect on men in college after the military service. They become very time cautious. They're hardly late or ever absent. Uh, they tend to mature up faster. They go to college and they're very immature. And as far as relationships, they're in a new one every few months anyway, so I don't think the <laughs> military has much of an effect on that. Um, they learn to work well with other people, and that's probably why the country as a whole is so important. 98% um, of Koreans from the age of 25 to 35 have a degree in either a JC, a university, or a graduate program. And 28% of Koreans have an education in general. While the UK has 15.2%, Italy has 8.3%, Germany has 12.5%, and the US has 24.5%. Funny thing is none of those countries have mandatory military. Also, um, I got a statistic from Israel. Israel is the second highest rated country with a top education. They, the studies show that early childhood education, along with military services, is associated with better performances in secondary schools. Also, I have a quote from my roommate. I hated the military. I didn't want to go, but I had to. My dad went, my brother went, and it was my duty to go too. It made me more friendly than I was before. I grew up, I studied more, and I'm glad that I did. I rest my case, you can stop the clock there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.